Hello everyone, here's a short video about a really useful tool that I recommend every DIYer to get, the solder fume extractor. You can find them in different price ranges, starting with a simple fan up to a professional extractor for workers that sit and do manual soldering full time. For a DIYer this is probably overkill, but it's actually possible to find this second hand at a good price. For someone that doesn't spend all day soldering, a fan with a filter is probably enough. And that is what we are going to build today. This whole project kicked off when I found a 3D printed model online. The housing is made for a 120mm computer fan, which is easy to get hold of. And I actually have a couple of those lying around at home. However, there is no way to turn it on and off easy. The author suggests using a USB powered fan. However, I wanted to use a standard computer chassis fan with a 4 or 3 pin connector. So I need some kind of power supply and a simple control unit to turn it on and off. But let's take one problem at a time and start with the 3D printing. And while that is working, let's see if we can figure out a simple way of building a control box. After some search on the internet I found this simple bistable flip-flop circuit that is made using only discrete components. I added a button, an LED and a switch fed driver to it and tested it with a computer fan that I had in a drawer. Yeah, it works like a charm. Now let's use a protoboard and put the electronics on that. But wait a minute, I got a better idea. Let's make a real PCB instead so it's easier for other people to build one. As you can see the electronic circuit is very simple. Just the bistable flip-flop triggered from a button and the DC input jack. The PCB has the same form factor as the prototype board. There is no need to make it bigger. I added a 5.5 slash 2.1 mm barrel type DC jack to the board and a 4 pin angled pin header for the fan. So the next step was to design a control box housing for the electronics. It consists of a bottom part where the PCB is attached with four 2.2mm self-tapping screws. The upper housing is snapped onto the bottom part. You can of course glue it in place if you like, but uh, I don't think that is necessary. The design is done in FreeCAD, so I will provide both the SDL files for printing and the design files in case you want to modify it or if you're just curious to have a look at it. Alright, let's import the STL files into the slicer and prepare a 3D print. I recommend to turn on supports to make the print of the top cover as good as possible. While that is running, let's assemble the PCB. The Gerber's schematic diagram files and iBOM will of course be available on my GitHub as usual. To make it super easy to source the components and to build it, I decided to use standard throw hole components. But I apparently was too relaxed when I built this because I managed to place one resistor in the wrong position and I messed up the soldering of one of the transistors, so I had to fix that off camera with better light and magnification. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, but now we are ready to test it. I have designed it for a standard power plug with 12 volt DC and at least one amp rating. The center pin should be connected to plus and the sleeve to ground. Next step is to hook up a fan and like on most PC motherboards, the four pin connector works for both three pin and four pin types of fans. This is how you connect the different types to the 4-pin header on the PCB. So the next part is to find a suitable filter for the extractor hood. I strongly recommend to use carbon type filter and you can buy them as a big sheet like the one that I show here and cut that into a suitable size. If you are thinking about skipping the filter, think again. This is what the filter looks like after a bit more than one year of use. The PCB is attached onto the bottom plate using four 2.2mm self-threading screws. The top cover is snapped into place. You may need to sand the cutouts for the connectors a bit to make it fit, depending on the quality of the 3D print. Alright, with all the needed parts in place, it's time to assemble the fume extractor and we start with attaching the fan to the back of the hood. Be careful not to break the hooks on the back because they are very fragile. It is a good idea to add three rubber feet to the stands. That keeps it from moving around on a workbench. Next we attach the inner grill that will keep the filter from getting sucked into the fan. Note that I attach it to the inner holes in the hood. Then we insert the filter and attach the outer grill that holds the filter in place. After that we can connect the fan and the power plug to the control box and test that it works. And with that I would like to thank you for watching and I hope that you find this video interesting and useful. Bye for now and I'll see you in the next one.